Hi everyone, and we're good to go again in the Women's Festival of Cycling. More events that are just keeping them coming. Some of you, I'm sure, have been tuning in to previous events already this week, and maybe some of you are here for the very first time because you're particularly interested in today's comments um, and topic and conversation. So whichever it is, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I've got a little bit of a wobbly screen there. Uh, this is live with Cycling UK. Cycling UK is a charity, so we are dedicated to getting more people cycling safely, easily, and enjoyable across the UK. We wanna make UK a cycling nation. We're also committed to, to reducing that gender gap that we have in cycling. It's completely unnecessary. Other countries don't have the same gender gap that we do. So we know for a fact that it can be, uh, can be made smaller and become a little bit more equal. So we can get equal number of men and women riding, which is why we're focusing and highlighting on uh, the Women's Festival of Cycling. But of course, men are definitely welcome to join us in any of our events and chats. If we've got anything to learn, anything to add, uh, please do in the live comments. So we've got a comments feed that's open for you guys in the audience so don't feel that this is a talk at you we're all in this discussion together we'd love to hear from you as well so even if it's just to say hi let us know where you're listening from who you are why you're watching today we'd love to hear from you and as we get further into the discussion if you want to have some tips and advice and share your experiences please please do so we'd love to hear from you uh, if you're interested in more of Cycling UK's work, you can check out their website and maybe even consider becoming a member. So as a member, you get insurance, you get discounts on bike parts, you get access to loads of tips and advice. And you also get that good warm feeling inside to know that you're doing a good thing for this sport of ours because your membership helps us continue to deliver things like this for free to the community, the cycling community and those who are interested in getting into cycling. So if you'd like to become a member, we've got an amazing offer during the Women's Festival of Cycling. It's six months just for £15. So give it, give it a think, go and check it out um, and maybe, maybe it's something for you or maybe you'd just like to do a little one-off donation. That would also be massively appreciated as well. Um, so that is all the housework talked about. Let's get on with today's discussion. And we've got Let's Heal the World saying hello from India. So thank you for tuning in from India. That's awesome. You probably, is anybody tuning in from further away than that? <laughs> or if, I mean, I'm in, I'm here from Spain. And we've got someone from India. Where else is everybody listening from? Please do get in touch in the comments. And let's get our guests on the screen today because we're talking about family cycling. So it's, it's a bit of a mammoth task, I imagine. I have to say, I imagine, because I'm not in that boat myself yet. When you've got kids and uh, you maybe want to get them into cycling, you're cycling with them, and there's a whole massive undertaking. So hopefully you can get some tips and advice from this panel and even just enjoy some anecdotes. So let's get them on the screen today. Uh, let's start with Laura, shall we? Should we introduce Laura onto the screen? And I'm going to please mind it's not wobbling so much. Laura, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Hi there. So could you just give a little bit of an intro, maybe what sort of cycling you do, how old your kids are, and what sort of cycling you do together? Yeah, my kids um, presently are 13, 10, and 7, and they have been riding since they uh, came out, basically, in one form or another. So um, presently, they are doing the school run by themselves, uh, come rain or come shine, and when they are just too tired they hop on the back of the cargo bike so uh during may they set themselves a challenge of doing 75 miles each and they managed 230 240 and 260 respectively so yeah that's a lot of miles for some little legs <laughs> amazing they popped out the womb pedaling that's pretty impressive yeah <laughs> they've got some amazing achievements under their belts already awesome I think the, uh, you know, starting off with uh, with a trailer, you know, we had a sort of cheap one when the first one was maybe Laura, know, eight months. I'm going to hold you there because yep. this is exactly the sort of tips and information we want from you. Um, and we're going to go into that discussion a little bit later on, on on how you managed it, if that's all right. And we'll start getting the other panellists on. Um, so, Zoe, do you want to join us? Hello. So don't forget you're on mute there. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. I'm Zoe and I'm from Bristol and I started a family cycling group called East Bristol Critical Mass in 2014 because I realized when I had my child um, I was really slow to get back on the bike with him. I was really a bit nervous and the second I put him on the back of my bike 
it was bliss, he enjoyed it, I enjoyed it, and I realized other mums would be experiencing the same. So since then, um, yeah, we've really all gotten much more into cycling as a family, and it's been really fantastic to see other families embrace it as well. <laughs> Amazing. I'm laughing there at the name, which is fantastic. Could you explain about, I mean, I get the little play on words that you've done there. So maybe you can explain to the audience what that's all about. So you might notice um, I don't have a Bristol or British accent. I'm actually from the United States. I'm from Oregon originally. And in Oregon, a movement started called Kidical Mass. And um, they've kind of come up with a brand and everything, but they're happy for other people to embrace it. It's really about getting more children out cycling, more families out cycling, and raising the profile of family cycling, um, well, internationally, really. So it is really fantastic to get out there with kids and use that space, because it's not just for cars, it's not just for you know the mammals on their bikes, it's for all of us. Excellent, and you're bringing some of that knowledge to the UK, so we're grateful for that. And hi to Laura from the Scottish Borders. It really is, we've got a big spread of us today, loving this. Um, Kaz, you've already been on some of these panels before. We're delighted to have you back in this capacity. Um, it's, it's a topic close to your heart, I'd say. So same, a similar sort of introduction to the others. Let people know about you. Yeah. I mean, I run a cycling business and I have done for 12 years now. And our kind of mission as a business is to invite women into cycling, make cycling feel more approachable, appealing, accessible. You know, so with that comes cycling with kids and actually... I had my first daughter about six months into setting up the business. So it's always been very much parenthood and cycling combined for me. And, you know, it's been a, a learning curve. And um, so I so I have got an 11 year old who um, and this is this makes me sad. And actually, maybe some of the other panelists can give me advice at some point later on is now a little bit like I don't want to cycle anymore. That's your thing, mum. So that's a bit sad. But we have had a lovely time cycling together. I've always had a either on a little um a little seat on the front or a little seat on the back and living in London, it was just invaluable. It's just how we got about, you know, it was, it was just, it was just so much part of our, our life and our transportation. Um, and then I also have a, a three year old, almost three, who is just an absolute whiz on the balance bike. And it's just amazing. And I, I'm literally, I'm round town running after her. So we're just about to try and transition her from balance bike to the normal bike. And then, um, so, yes, I've got, you know, two different ages and two different ranges of the spectrum. And I've spoken to a lot of women over the years who've had different experiences cycling with kids. So, you know, hopefully I can talk about some of that. Excellent. Thank you. And um, next up, we've got Gabby. So you're new to the panel. Uh, we're really pleased to invite you on. Uh, tell us a little bit about who you are and, and your cycling family experience. Hi everyone, I'm um, Gabby and I'm from Kamut. So Kamut's like a route planning and navigational app. So super useful for planning like family bike rides and bike rides for yourself. Um, I've also got two little ones. I've got a three-year-old Coralie who um, is also on the balance bike. She's not super keen on it though, because I think my husband takes her mountain biking a lot on the little seats on the front. And she finds it a bit disappointing that she can't get herself up to like 60k an hour and go off jumps. <laughs> so maybe we've, yeah, spoilt her a bit with the, the mountain biking experience. Um, and then a little boy, Jasper, who's just about to turn one. So he's just started um, sitting on the little trike with the handle and going in the trailer the two of them together so that's yeah super nice oh that's so cute <laughs> like gotta be the cutest age and things to see and uh, finally we've got michelle joining us hi yes thank you thank you for inviting me to the panel um i i've been cycling for a long time and i'm very lucky to have a 10 year old nearly a 10 year old and an 11 year old and as a family, my husband cycled, I cycled, that's how we that's how we met. So our four children possibly have never had a choice in the matter. But as you say, um, you know, I've got an eleven year old now and she will say, Mama, I'll ride with you because that's the only way I've seen you. And it makes me feel slightly sad, but at the other hand I kind of think, well, at least she's on her bike. So um and we do have greatest of chat. So it's been a really, really interesting journey from going from purely a selfish perspective of this is my time, this is my cycling, to actually sharing it and you know that's what our family does we're known for that so it's just really yeah it's just really exciting and now to be able to talk about it um you know with other like-minded women is fantastic 
Yeah, the cycling family. I think my yeah. parents were that one on our street when I was growing up. <laughs> embarrassing, but kind of cool, but kind of embarrassing at different times. And what I really like about this panel as well, we've got a range of different ages, kids of different ages, and we've got little boys and little girls in there. Um, so we can talk about different, a whole range of different experiences and how society um, impacts on that as well. So starting, I mean, we'll probably do this chat a bit through as we go through like an age an age trend timeline. Uh, so if we start talking about babies um, and the, the real little ones, so like we say, popping them out peddling, um, I love that phrase. Um, how How is that for anybody who's maybe recently had a kid or is about to have one? What was the first age that you felt comfortable putting your baby on a bike and how did you do it? So we'll go for a hands up system here. Yeah, Michelle. Well, because um, I was very keen to be able to put, stick the baby on the bike and go. And for me, um, I'm also an occupational therapist by background. So child development is kind of something I know. And I kind of knew that the baby needed to be able to hold their head up by themselves in the first instance. So um, the minute they could do that, I think I even tried to put them in the trailer in the car seat, um, which is actually an option. But our, our trailer was too small to actually accommodate good strapping and baby in the car seat in the trailer. So I did have to wait until they could hold their heads up properly. So five, six months old. Um, I don't know if that if you share that um, the rest of your panel. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, Laura, is it that you have the same experience? There we are. Sorry, controlling. Um, yeah, with our with my first, um, I was you know reading all of the books, wanting to make sure that I did everything right. And I was nervous, I think, about taking my baby out. I thought I'm gonna give them brain damage or I'm gonna have loads of issues. So I was really cautious. But when number two came along, I was classically more confident and I didn't want to wait any longer. Plus I now had a kind of really active two-year-old who was basically just going, mummy, bike, bike, bike. So very quickly we had to invest in a trailer which had like a suspension seat post for the baby. So from about um, three months, maybe even less than that, we started going on short distances and she was fine. Um, and then she got bigger and stronger. But for me, mentally, being able to get out that bit earlier was was key. And if I had another one now, which I will not, then <laughs> I would have them out as soon as soon as I could, definitely, with the right equipment and because I felt comfortable. And so you say the right equipment, that trailer, is this something that goes on the front of your bike or on the back of the, your bike? How does it work? Yeah, so this was a trailer that goes on the back. Um, so, you know, it goes on the back. Can you say brand names? Can I do that? Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. Yeah. Well, this was a this was a chariot trailer. I think they're now owned by, I think, uh, Fuel have a partnership with them. And uh, it's a very long wheelbase trailer and it had sort of suspension wheels on the back like you would on a mountain bike. So it had all of those flexibilities. And then a screen that came over the top for flies and for rain and everything. And then inside, you basically put a bassinet that um, strapped on and therefore that had this suspension system inside it as well. Um, and that, yeah, that was brilliant. Um, but then when the last one came along, we had a cargo bike, which was on the front, so a box on the front and same thing with a suspension, but he went sideways the other way around and I had two at the front and one at the back. <laughs> Amazing, and how did you choose that equipment as well? And the cargo bikes, they get quite costly, don't they? Yeah. Definitely. But for me, living in a living in a town um, where my school run um, by the time number three had come along, I had one in primary school, one in nursery and then a baby. And it meant that actually, you know, being able to cycle, to keep my mind active, to keep the kids fresh, arriving at school, not in the car all stressed from the travel, you know, and parking and everything um, was really important. But yeah, it was expensive, but then we didn't have a second car. So it's a trade off, I think, and something that we felt was where we needed to spend our money. Yeah, absolutely. What, an investment, really, that was worth yeah. it for your lifestyle. And has anybody else on the panel, maybe they felt that they wanted to get their kids on the bike a little bit later for personal reasons because it ultimately it comes down to personal choice doesn't it and I think that's important to get across no, it has you got the mute the mute on the phone yeah. so, uh, sorry I thought I would be kind of straight on um but actually I did need a bit of time to sort of 
you know, initially recover from having babies. Um, and I did feel a little bit nervous. And, and, I, and it's really interesting to hear more about trailers because I was always a bit worried about having them on a lower level than me on the trailer. And I kind of wanted them on the bike with me. So I waited with both of them actually till just over one. I think they were both about 14, 15 months. And then I was just really confident that they, you know, they could sit up straight and, and then, and I put them straight into to little seats. So as I said before, the seat at the front, I just loved. And it's just a shame they can't stay in it for longer because their legs get too long that they don't fit under the handlebars anymore. But that attaches to the handlebar stand. And then, so they're basically just here in front of you and you feel so safe that you're kind of protecting them. You can see them as you're cycling. So yeah, so for me, I started with both of them on a little seat at the front at about 15 months and then moved them to a seat at the back um which my youngest one now loves that and my eldest one stayed on the seat on the back till she was six which was maybe a bit too long I probably should have got her on her own bike by then but it just it just worked so well it worked so well and we just you know as I said we went we did school run we did ballet we did shopping we did everything with with the seat on the back you know so it was a great great option for us and what would other mums think when you're turning up with little ones on your bike would you get yeah. comments yeah, and that's, that's the one thing I love about cycling is people really like it. And I'm sure, you know, the other ladies, especially with cargo bikes, people are always like, wow, that's so cool. You know, people, it, it brings a smile to people's faces. And I think that's one way we can hopefully over time get more people cycling with their families, with their kids. Because when you do turn up at the school gates on a bike, people go, oh, that's so great. I wish I could do that. So I think it inspires other people. And we've definitely always got lots of comments. The one difficulty, which is perhaps a tip with having a, a seat on the back or on the front, is you have to find somewhere to rest your bike before you can get off and get your child off. So I would be constantly looking for walls. Wherever I was dropping off or picking up at the school, you'd be looking for a wall that you could lean against. And I think, you know, a facility that would be really useful is at these, at these points where parents need to get off their bike and drop off kids is a facility that's not just bike parking, but it's a kind of like rest your bike lean your bike and that I mean that's a good thing with cargo bikes isn't it they they have that stability so you don't need to lean them against something <laughs> so you still ended up in the traffic dilemma finding parking in a certain yeah. way <laughs> yeah just walls that's what I needed <laughs> and Zoe I saw your hand sneak up there so what do you want to say about this yeah so I mentioned I didn't start cycling with my son till he was probably around two um, but my husband had him on the bike from about age one. Part of the issue with starting clinical mass as well was that I wanted to create something where women and, and parents could try out different things, whether a cargo bike or um, I ended up getting a Burley B trailer as well and front seats and back seats, because I think that's one of the things once you decide you do want to cycle with your child, there's so many things to choose from and it's really difficult to know what's going to work for you. Um, some parents came along on rides and tried out, for example, the trailer and there was one baby that just screamed the entire time and he's just like well maybe next time you'll try out the cargo bike maybe you'll be happier in the front but I think it's really important to be able to test and try these things if it's all possible. Absolutely that's a brilliant idea actually do you know if there's many of that sort of scheme around in the UK? Um, I think some cities have set up cycle libraries or um, yeah different types of um, things that you can borrow but again that can be quite challenging um, even from my project it was quite a challenge just finding a place to store bicycles and to store the yeah. seats and to store a cargo bike um, Kaz mentioned also with the cycle parking I think the infrastructure in Bristol in any case yeah. you do have um, some cycle parking in places but there's definitely not enough for just normal bikes but then if you've got a trailer or you've got a cargo bike that's going to take up more space and it would be great to see better infrastructure just so that you could easily park a bicycle with a seat you know lean it up against something or have that extra bit of space to make sure that your trailer wasn't obscuring the footpath yes yeah, so we all want to get on the bike for, uh, on the fight for campaigning for better infrastructure but I feel like that's a bigger issue than we're able to do just on our own at the at the moment during this chat um, and I just want to let people know in the live comments, Cycling UK, there's a guide um, for how to choose a bike seat if you're interested in looking at that online. So have a look in the comments there. And there's a comment here from Claire. Uh, she said, I used to have a tagger bike for mine. We loved it. 
Um, I'd love to hear from you, Claire, if you could describe what that is, whether it's a link or just a little bit of a description. And then once we see that, I'll put it up on the on the screen so that we can see more about it. Yeah, Laura, you put your hand up. Yeah, I know what that one is, I think, okay. uh, um, which is basically where, I, if I'm right, it's almost like you've got a push chair that's attached to the front of the bike. So it's like a cargo bike, but that bit can then be detached and then you can then, I think you kind of swap it round and then you can push chair around town. So I think it's a really, really clever piece of kit. Cool. All right. For anybody interested in those, do go check it out. We've got some links there in the comments as well. And do you think that that experience of getting your kids on the bikes quite early and having them get used to that sensation of cycling? I mean, Gabby, you said it almost backfired on you in the terms of then actually getting them learning how to ride a bike to do it by themselves. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's like a funny one. We always, um, well, my husband's like massively into cycling as well. So we always thought that our kids would just absolutely love it and be like flying straight away. So we got um, our daughter a balance bike, I think, when she was two. And she likes it and she'll ride it, but she's not super fussed. Um, and so we just don't feel like we want to necessarily push it on her. And she seems much more interested in, she loves rock climbing, actually. And um, likes going on her scooter and things like that but then she absolutely loves going on that seat on the front that um, you were talking about Kaz um, and we do a lot of mountain biking with her and I think it does give them that really nice like feel for how it is on a bike and they almost feel like they're well obviously not in control but <laughs> maybe they feel like they are um, and we also are super keen to take the kids off-road um, we live out in the countryside, so we're not in a town or a city, so we're not doing that kind of like urban um, riding. It's more like we've got big like forests near us and all of those kind of things. So the seat on the front's been a real like game changer. Yeah, and I guess it gives them a sense of the wind in their hair and, and you know, one of the, some of the real joyful things that cycling brings. I mean, when you're really little, when you're starting to try and move a bike along, this is quite hard work at first. How did some of you else uh, get your kids starting off to be independent on their own bikes? So just hands up, Kaz. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I've got an interesting story with my elder daughter and, you know, similar to what you're saying, Gabby, um, that we, I was so into bikes and I just presumed she would sort of take to it and get it. And I think I've made a few mistakes as well, actually by keeping her on a seat on the back for so long, she got used to that and was a little bit hesitant to go on her own. And then we made, I didn't do a bounce bike with her. I don't know why, maybe they just weren't quite so around or I just missed the boat on it, I don't know. So then she had a bike with stabilizers, which you know isn't advised now. And she just, and she didn't love it. She wasn't, I wanna go out on my bike. And it was quite difficult because I sort of felt guilty. I thought, what have I done wrong? And, you know, there should be something, I should be doing something as a parent to get her into it. But I think what it teaches you, it's a, it's a lesson in parenting as well, is you can't force kids to do things. And kids come to things in their own time. And actually, she didn't learn to ride the bike till she was seven. And she didn't learn with me. We went on a camping holiday and we just suddenly saw her on another kid's spot. She'd met some friends. And one of them had given her a go on the bike and she learned on her own without any parent influence. And I think that's just sometimes the way it goes. Whereas my three year old, it's a different story. I mean, she's just she's just off and she loves it. So I think it's like all kids are different. Yes, you can guide them and help them, but you can't always push them, like physically push them, but you can't actually always push them into it. You have to let them get there in their own time. It's almost like they're their own independent people, something like that. What, what a thought. <laughs> Michelle, yeah, I saw you uh, getting enthusiastic along with that as well. Oh, absolutely. I totally agree. You know, each child is very different. And um, I've got a saying that you quit while you're ahead. So you bring them home saying, oh, we didn't go far enough. Um, if you bring, if you drag them home and you've still got three Ks to go, you're in a little bit of trouble. So that's been my philosophy. So I'm always trying to keep it fun. Try, you know, and if they want to stop and climb a tree and you actually know you want to get to a different picnic spot, let them stop and climb a tree with their helmets on. You know, what could be safer? But, um, you know, that for me really is a key, key, key thing with young, with young children is just quit while you're ahead every time. Mm, amazing. Yes. Yeah. There's nothing kind of more demoralizing sometimes than seeing a really pushy parent trying to force their you know that with all the best will in the world they love something so much they want to pass it on to their kids but 
as you seem to be saying, it can have an adverse effect. Zoe, what did you want to add? I just wanted to say that uh, my son started cycling when he was about three because we got him a balance bike and he loved it. But um, I did get some um, pilot funding to do um, training for kids in reception age school age so like four to five because i think that a lot of kids don't learn until they're a bit older but actually if they can learn with other children around the same age that really pushes them and then the other thing is if you can go on rides with other families or if you've got a space like um a play street or something like that where it's safe for them to practice with other kids it really i think having that community of other kids their own age pushes them more than you know seeing their parents out up ahead or something like that it's more difficult for them mentally to think about keeping up but if they're they're right there with someone the same height and size and everything i think they're much more motivated to learn and also much more motivated to cycle long distances my son cycled about 60k um, when he was about six years old just because another little boy was uh, right there doing it with him <laughs> so it's about finding the right peer group, I suppose. You as a parent can guide them and show them the ropes, but maybe you're not going to be the most motivational people to them. So has any of you uh, got your kids into cycling clubs or will be thinking about getting them into clubs and things like that? Michelle? Yes. Yeah, so, well, my son is super, super keen. Um, he almost thinks that that is the only sport that ever was and ever existed um he was watching the tour de france at age three saying come on bradley wigglins <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so yeah but he's he loves cycling so he does i put him into a club because he started doing cyclocross racing with my husband i've done a tiny little bit and um and i have to take my daughter along as well and you know and that's just the best thing because exactly as you're saying they in that community my son wants to be a little bit faster, a little bit more, you know, track stand for a little bit longer. You know, he wants to do all of those cool things, which, you know, if I say to him, come track stand in the garden, he's gonna go, ah, whatever, mum. But you put him in the cycle club and, you know, and he just loves it. It gives a whole new meaning to his cycling. And for him, it's now his journey. It's not, it's not just something he's doing with the family anymore. It's his own, his own thing. My daughter, as I said, you know, she she enjoys it. She actually could be very good. I know that, but I'm not ever going to force it on her for her it's you know she'll do it when she wants to and if she discovers it as a passion later on well so be it has anyone else got anything to add about uh, kids cycling around with other kids that so might i mean michelle's there talking about a little racing cycling club and actually I, I, one more thing uh, michelle what's that like then getting kits for kids you know, if they, they want to take it seriously they want to copy their idols in the tour de france i imagine that probably from a young age they want helmets, lycra, all the rest of it, clipping pedals. What's that yeah. like? When can you start with that? Well, uh, just, well they, the problem is they grow out of stuff so quickly, you know, and um, that really is a big issue. So we kind of have like one set of stuff um, for them and it just goes in the washing machine so that, um, you know, it hopefully wears out before they grow out of it. But um, yeah, I mean, we do spend, we've got a separate budget for cycling in our family, as you can well imagine. But it's not always that easy. You know, if I'm looking for some decent waterproof winter gloves for my kids, uh, cycling gloves, you know, that are not ski gloves, um, I find that really difficult. So if anyone's got any ideas out there, please let us know. Um, but it yeah. is getting better. It is getting better, but it's not it's not quite there yet. Yeah. We'd love to hear in the comments from the audience. And Michelle, where have you discovered that does provide um, you know, cy the proper cycling kit for little ones? Have you got any advice for anyone listening where they can look for that sort of thing? Um, there are some dedicated websites. I can't think offhand, but there's um, Wiggle does stuff. So DHB, actually, I think some of their products are really, really good for the kids. They um, they fit well, they last well, they're good quality fabrics. It's not a compromise on an adult on the adult stuff, but it's also in a price range that is, you know, makes it affordable. Um, but, you know, places like Hulfords, actually, they do really good helmets. They've, they're very, very kitted up for family and for the younger rider as well. Um, and then you can get your specialist shops like Sigma Sport, where you can actually go and get, you know, your the same kit as dad, <laughs> essentially, if they want to. Um, yeah to the cycling club you know we've got our stuff from the cycling club so um you know cycling shoes clipping cycling shoes for kids is also quite tricky because you know i really don't want to be spending 80 pounds on a pair of shoes they're going to outgrow in a couple of months to be honest so yeah it comes with it comes as a challenge you can get stuff but it's expensive 
Yeah, cool. And we've got someone in the comments here saying that all their three kids also ride in a local club, doing cyclocross, racing, club rides, mountain biking, and they're best friends. And I like this comment here, particularly if school friends are being difficult. Now, that really resonates with me because I remember cycling as a child. And when things weren't going, it worked both ways sometimes when things weren't going so well with um, the girls at the school that I was at, then it was such a welcome relief to have my little friendship group in the cycling world. But then also it worked the other way around. I remember things weren't always going so well in the cycling club when I was the only girl and hit the teenage years. And then, yeah, I was grateful then that I had had the school group and that is really what sort of motivated me. Has anybody else introduced cycling with other kids to their kids in different ways? So maybe less in the race format, but I, I mean, is that sort of thing offered by schools? Are there things like that around where kids can just ride with other kids? Kaz? I mean, I don't think there is, and I think that's maybe a problem. And my mm. my daughter just did her bikeability in year six, and it, which is great that they get the opportunity to do that. But it's quite disjointed because they learn to cycle, and then there's it's not actually really safe for a lot of them to cycle to school because we haven't got the. Inf I'm going on about infrastructure again now, but um, I think I don't think there is enough of that, and it'd be great if if anyone knows about things like that, like that. And, and it's so interesting. Sorry, my script, Zoe, what you were saying about kids need to be with their peers and that, that's exactly what happened to my daughter me pushing her didn't work but we went to a campsite it's those kind of environments where kids learn to cycle and enjoy it because they are just all kids together so I think it's something that needs to be encouraged and you know to try and get that that interaction amongst them to get them all going rather than just being quite a, a strict format which is what bikeability is and they come out of that and a lot, a lot, a lot of kids won't use it and they, it, there's no follow-on if you know what I mean it does seem quite a private world sport you know you get into it through your family and your parents by them introducing you to other kids clubs it doesn't really come through the school system as much that's definitely the case I want to talk a little bit about bikeability soon but Michelle I know that you've got to leave so I don't know if there's any other comments that you'd like to add before you go that you think are particularly useful and also it'd be nice if you had a look in the live comments from the audience and maybe brought highlighted one of them that you'd particularly like to put on the screen um well, you know, obviously you've all, um, you know, you've realized that my kids are involved in clubs and things. So, um, but I would, I would, what, what, I'm a cycle coach in the club as well. And I think the thing that I find saddest really is that, you know, they're 15 boys and they're two girls. And, and I really, I would just encourage your girls to have a go. And the more, the more girls we can get into these cycling clubs, I just really think it's, it's good. You know, it's really good as, you know, as the community has been saying, both in the live comments and what we've been saying is, you know, about that de-stressing, that community you build up, that common interest that you're gaining, that fun you're having. You know, just because you're in a cycle club doesn't mean you have to go racing at all. But you know that you're going to meet up with those group of people on a Saturday morning or whatever it is and have some fun. But if you're wanting to think about stuff like that, the go ride um, sessions are really good fun. Uh, so go and find them in your area. They run through the local cycling clubs. Um, it's a British cycling initiative. And I would just, you know, if you're thinking about getting your kids into some sort of cycling from that perspective, go for it on the go ride. Definitely encourage that. And I just want to say thanks to one of the comments. Um, the the website that I was talking about with the kids clothing is um, it's kidsracing.co.uk. So I have got stuff from that as well. So, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so thank you very much for the opportunity. And I need to go and mop up tears from my year six lever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. We'll have a good time. Okay, love you. Thanks for your input. See you later. Bye. Okay, cool. So we're going to continue now. We've started mentioning bikeability. So could anybody want to explain what that is? I've taught Zoe. Oh, I also did a cycle instructor training around the time I set up my critical mass group. And bikeability is um, basic skills for uh, learning how to cycle. And also you've got several levels of it. So the first level is just basically being able to get on the bike make it go, make it stop, turn, those type of things. And once you get to level three, you're able to cycle in heavy traffic. I think most schools only do bikeability levels one and two. I don't think they do that much of level three, but it, um, as someone said, it's only in year six that uh, most schools offer it. And 
you know, that's quite late really to get those cycle skills. I think of cycling as a life skill. And um, what I discovered in my neighborhood, I live in an inner city um, neighborhood, a lot of women um, from other cultures, they never learned how to cycle as girls. It wasn't acceptable in their communities. And so as a cycle instructor, uh, I was able to teach a number of women to cycle as well and give them those skills, which you know sometimes led to them cycling with their families, but also often led to them finding that sort of strength to try other things, whether it was swimming or other activities that they didn't feel confident to do beforehand. And I think with the gender gap, it's just really important to normalize cycling, that it is a normal way to get you know to and from school, to go to the shops, and the more, girls that can see women on bicycles you know of all shapes sizes colors what have you i think the more girls will see getting into the sport as well um i think it's really important because i think girls physical activity levels really start to drop from the age of eight or nine in comparison with boys and then once they get on to secondary school it's even worse so i'm just you know even though i have a son i'm still quite passionate about trying to get more girls out there active doing stuff um and and level things out a bit it's, it's so it's fundamental really isn't it because we do see that gender gap and we're often trying to try and get more women into cycling but it starts at such a young age that in society in our culture that women are put off cycling like michelle was saying there there's like 20 boys and two girls in one cycling club and i I mean, I don't really know what the solution there is. Is it coming from parents? And it, it almost becomes a vicious circle because when we're talking about peer groups, if girls don't have other girls in the cycling club, and it definitely happened to me, they're probably not going to want to continue going to that club if it's meant to be something fun. Um, I don't know if any of you who've got boys and girls can, can see a, a difference there and how to approach it or tackle it. Laura? Yeah, I don't know whether I have a, a different way of tackling it because I've got one boy and two girls. But the whole missing link for me is that cycling is not part of a national curriculum. So, you know, if kids were, I mean, my kids are fortunate or unfortunate, depending which way they look at it, that me and their dad are both active cyclists. So most of the time we're doing something. So they, as the through that process of cycling uh, and they're confident on the road and they're confident off road but only because we have the skills to teach them but a lot of their peers are missing that entirely because either their parents don't want to cycle can't cycle or I have a, a close friend who physically is not something that they can do and so we aren't able to then teach our children if it doesn't form part of the of the school day week you know it, it is only bikeability at year six that comes into play and you're lost by that point you know to learn to turn left is not something you need if you have no real skill past that yeah i couldn't agree with you more to be honest to get it as a national curriculum thing it's just such a missed opportunity and like you say it's a life skill and it's it's a safety skill if you want to start reducing your carbon footprint for example when you want to start cycling as an adult you think oh this is a good idea and you haven't done it as a kid it's just so hard then to get into it I mean how old how old did you guys feel comfortable getting your kids cycling on the road or would you do you think feel comfortable getting your kids cycling on the road by themselves um, as in they're the ones pedaling their own bikes as opposed to being on a bike with you um, have you had different experiences in that yeah, Laura again. Yeah, only because I've got the three. But I think it's really interesting, and we've all touched on it, is, you know, our children are all unique, just as we are. And my eldest, um, who will maybe shoot me later, she's probably the least confident of them all, but she cycles the furthest because now she goes to secondary school. And she's very fortunate that she has a cycle path the entire way. Um, but she is the more nervy of them, and I have to respect that that's how she feels. Um, my middle one who, you know, was cycling to school at the age of eight and a half um, and I was nearby, but she knew how to turn, how to look behind her, how to cross and all of that. And she's had some scary moments and I think it's made her stronger with it. But um, it is just tr the more you teach them. But yet again, the likes of bikeability won't teach them that. And it's only a confident parent that does that. And therefore, you've got this great mass of kids you see out all the time going around all the gravel tracks local to them. But they wouldn't necessarily know how to put that into practice to get them to school safely so that you as a parent know that they're going to get there in one piece. 
Yeah, absolutely. And Zoe, yeah? We had a follow me tandem when my son was a bit younger, which was a really useful way actually to kind of teach him how to cycle on busier roads and things like that. So he was physically attached to one of our bicycles. Um, and yeah, I guess being aware of, of other drivers, being able to see him uh, in traffic was really important to me. So that was useful. He's um, nine now and he has been cycling um, without being attached to our, our bikes for a couple of years. But um, I think it can be really um, nerve wracking as a parent. And I don't know why this is, but as a mother, I, I found myself being much more concerned and protective, I guess, um, and my partner being much more willing to, I guess, let him have those scary moments, which, um, yeah, was an interesting yeah, dynamic, I guess. Yeah, and different personality types come into it as well. And then the parents having the skill. Because um, Gabby, you were saying that you're really interested in your children enjoying cycling in the great outdoors. You know, it's, it's about getting out into nature and things like that. But And they're also still quite young. So speaking, listening to these women now, do you have an idea of wanting to get them on the road and at least having those skills? Or is it something that you'd let them lead you to decide later in life? Yeah, um, sorry, I'm finding, I'm just listening in because I'm finding it really interesting because it's actually all really good <laughs> good advice for me. And um, I think at the moment we don't have any kind of commute, like myself and my husband work at home, uh, the kids have a child minder, so we're not going to a nursery. So we kind of miss the aspect of it being so much in our daily lives. We do things like we cycle to the milk station down the road and like, you know, things like that. Um, with the kids but I think for us at the moment um, our big focus is we want the kids also to be super aware of what they can do on a bike and what's possible and that they can road cycle they could gravel ride they could mountain bike so I think we make sure that they're like aware of that and we show them like cycling on tv or in magazines or we show them photos of things that we've done on bikes and we try and build more experiences at the moment like we do things like we're cycle and we take the kids like camping overnight and um trying to share those kind of things but definitely when the time comes that they're at school i would absolutely yeah love to be able to make it normal for them to go by bike and i think it is super important as you guys were saying that cycling is just a mode of transport as well as maybe being like more of a hobby or um like competitive sports or anything like that it's just yeah normal <laughs> yeah and if they if kids are using their bike as a mode of transport you've convinced them to cycle with you to school i'm interested to hear about any uh, products that you can recommend that you've learned through trial and error um, of doing this with your kids how do they get their bike uh, their sorry their books in their bags and their lunch boxes and all of that to school with them and just juggling, I suppose, that sort of part of life. Yes, Nutkaz. So yeah, I mean, I found I usually end up carrying everything. Obviously, if they're if they're independent and they're cycling on their own, that's a different ball game. But when you start cycling with kids, as the mum, you end up carrying everything. So a big basket is useful because you can't always, if you've got a seat on the back, you can't always get panniers on the back, which has always really annoyed me. And I'm, I'm tr always trying to find a seat where you can still attach panniers. Um, so I have a massive, strong wire basket so I can have a little one on the back and pile up all the bags and nursery bags and my work bag. So that works quite well. Um, and I think, you know, rucksacks for kids are great when they're cycling. It's that's really easy and they can hold things themselves. Um, and actually, my daughter has got her own pannier on the back of her bike now, which is also this is slightly going back to the whole teenage girl thing, which... I think is a massive problem and it, it in the statistics it's the most underrepresented group for, for cycling it's something happens to girls when they kind of go through adolescence 11 12 13 where they don't want to cycle anymore so one thing i try with my daughter is i entice her with the accessories because she likes shopping and she likes accessories so um we sell some helmets that are kind of nice and uh, nice nice colors and sort of you know rose gold and champagne and and that and, and nice pretty bells and things so I try and use some of these things to get and that and it does work to some extent with with my 11 year old because she gets quite excited about having all these nice things on her bike um so uh so yeah that's that's kind of my take on on the gear that I've used with the kids yeah I remember being super embarrassed cycling to school with like a big mushroom helmet and um, yeah just a cycling kit your image 
you get to an age where your image is really important to you, whatever it is that you want to try and say or your statement of what you're putting out. But most kids and then teenagers do go through a stage of their image being important. So I um, don't know if anybody else has come across kids like being embarrassed of not wanting to ride or the fact that their other school friends aren't doing it. Is that something, I mean, Laura, did that ever come into play with either of your three? Yeah, I think um, certainly uh, when we hit the wind last winter, just gone, um, and I went on to decathlon as any sensible parent would and bought three matching pairs of waterproof black trousers. Um, and uh, the youngest two thought that they were awesome because they looked like the bin guy outside and this was really cool. But my eldest was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? Just like, I am not wearing those. And I think you will, you will wear them. They will keep you dry. And in the end, I was like, you know what? If you're going to get to school soaking wet, but you're cycling, crack on. And it was just, you know, you just had to kind of adjust. Um, but uh, but then we bought her a, a helmet with like lights in. Um, so she thought that was quite cool. Um, and again, like you say, it's finding a backpack or something that um, they're happy with. My, my middle one, um, uh, uh, earlier this year was really quite poorly um, and we thought that she would have to stop cycling she had to give up gymnastics so um, I then had to then she couldn't wear a backpack so we had to look for some alternatives and we found a system and it's not cheap but it was called click fix I think it's like a, a German brand of panniers and you could put something on the back of the um, seat post and then click her backpack um, to that um, so actually behind my head, you can just see that bar on the Brompton there. And it's that kind of attachment that the backpack goes on. And it's that kind of stuff that is worth looking into, definitely. Makes it so much easier. Yeah. And hopefully the audience will pick up on these tips and make it easier for them not to have to go through the trial and error. Gabby, yeah. I think as well, one thing that we um, have experienced a few times is especially when the kids aren't peddling themselves yet. So if they're in like the trailers or on the front or anything, I think it's always like um, worth remembering they get really cold. Um, mm. So <laughs> we've had quite a few times where we've gone out riding and we're like super hot because we're working doubly as hard. So we've got all this extra weight on our bikes, but they're like absolutely freezing and having to stop and like take our socks off and put them on their hands. and. <laughs> Like all of these kind of things. So getting like the all-in-one little fleecy waterproofs and um, our daughter won't go out without a pair of like mountain bike goggles on, but <laughs> I guess it stops like the mud going in her eyes and stuff. Um, and just making sure that they actually wear like loads and loads of kit and having like loads in like the back as well. And we always take a big flask of like hot chocolate or hot milk or like whatever, because even in like the summer when they're going downhill and those kind of things, I think they just like, yeah, really feel the cold. Yeah, it's a really good piece of advice there actually. And it's conjuring up some great images as well. I'd love to see a pic of, a pic of your daughter with her goggles on. In fact, maybe I can get a little thread going in our women's cycling group that we've got for Cycling UK where we can post some pictures of our kids out cycling. I think that would be a really sweet thing to see. So anybody else in the comments who'd like to post some pictures, please do. And maybe I'll start a little bit of a thread. That would be nice. Um, and what about bikes, the actual tools that the kids are using to cycle? I think we need to spend a few minutes talking about the options there. Zoe, your hand is straight up. Yeah, I noticed somebody in the comments also mentioned Isla bikes and their panniers. So my son has an Isla bike. I think it's his third or fourth one now. But I do think it's important. Um, it doesn't have to be an Isla bike, but I think it's important that children have bikes that are light and the geometry is right for them. Um, some of the bikes, I think they've massively improved just since um, my son's been cycling. But I remember uh, seeing some of the bikes that other kids got at his school and, and nursery, and they were just so heavy and clunky. And I thought it's no wonder that you know these kids don't want to continue cycling. They've got this horrible piece of machinery that doesn't work for them and it looks easy but then it's it's not easy it's hard to reach the brakes that type of thing so I think it's it's quite important to spend a little bit more money but get something that's um really worth it and will last I mean those bicycles hold their value yeah and I think sometimes think of changing the gears as well you know you get these big massive shifters and their little fingers just can't do it and it's like they'll get bikes that look really cool because it's made to look like a space rocket or something like that but it's just got all its extra plastic parts on it 
um, and stuff like that. I mean, if it inspires them to ride, that's great, but it does make it so much harder and off-putting. Gabby? I think like one of you guys will be able to maybe like fill in the details on this, but I think there's quite a few schemes out there where you can get a bike in your kid's size and you almost hire it. And then when they grow out of it, you can swap it for the next size up. Is that right? It yeah, seems like a pretty good option. Yeah. I know that I can definitely say about Hope Academy, they offer that scheme. So it's like you buy the one bike and then as they grow out of it, you pass the smaller bike back and you can do a pass exchange to get a larger bike. Um, and Laura, your hand went up there as well. Yeah, so uh, the Bike Club is another one that's probably most people are familiar with. You pay a certain amount of money each month. And it's an interesting one because we talk about the cost of these bikes and they are expensive. And it's a real shame that kids' bikes that are good quality are more than adults' bikes in some spaces. And um, my youngest son um, has a heart condition. And so, you know, he rides to a certain extent. And we said, you know, I'm really not sure that I can justify this money. He might not take to it. But we did it through the bike club. And, you know, he is a happy little cyclist. And one day went from being quite happy to being super happy the next day with this lightweight bike. He was chucking all over the place. The bike's called Trevor. And, uh, you know, he's gone from being slightly concerned about his health to this not mattering to him at all because the bike has over has compensated for that. And so he's, yeah, he's up and down mountains and yeah, he's, he's so happy. Yeah, it's awesome. They say it's not about the bike, but sometimes it just is, isn't it? And Kirsty, thank you. You've um, put the link in the, in the comments there for the bike, the, the bike club.co.uk. So thanks for that. Anyone who wants to find out more about it can look in that link. We've got Hope Academy. Uh, they also do that type of scheme and hopefully we'll get a link up as well for Isla Bike so you can get all that information there. Um, so I want to start wrapping this up now. Is there any topics that you guys feel that really need to be brought up that we haven't covered yet? Um, anything that you particularly want to say before we start? closing um so if we're good on that that's great and if you want to go through the live comments each of you um kaz knows the format here she's done this before so i want to ask you to have a look through the live comments and uh, pick one out that you feel like you particularly like to highlight um or if there's a question that you feel like hasn't been answered i'd love it if you could just highlight it and we'll come to you one by one likewise in the audience if there's anything that you want to say or get highlighted get it in the comments right now and uh, we might pick it out there's one that i wanted to to bring up which is from marigold there and she said why are we still talking about cycle infrastructure as though this opportunity of lockdown to change things and um yeah so we've got it on the screen there and you've brought up so many important things there and here at cycling uk we really do try and put in a huge effort to campaign um to, to change all these things that you're absolutely talking about. So we're campaigning for safer streets. Again, if you go into the comments there, you'll be able to see a link for um, what we're currently campaigning on. Uh, Kaz, are you able to pop on mute? Because we're just getting a little bit of feedback. Oh, we've lost you again, or have we? No, no, we're all right. Um, so yeah, we, we're do, trying to do loads of campaign work. Couldn't agree with you more. So thank you for bringing that up, Marigold. Um, right, Laura, have you had a little look through the comments? Is there anything that you'd like to highlight there? Yeah, there's a lady called Claire Reed. It was about half past one where she was talking about her daughter maybe taking part in the transplant games. And I think that one thing we haven't said is just how important cycling is to our health, mental and physical. You know, I've said I've got two kids who both have conditions and cycling has changed their lives for the better. That isn't about them becoming GB athletes, but maybe they will one day. But it's about the fact that they've got this opportunity. So, you know, I think anyone who can get their kids into it from a from a health point of view, yeah, thumbs up. Yeah. Mental health, physical health, and, and confidence there as well. You just made me think of how um, recently as an adult, I was wanting to message my mum and just say thank you for teaching me how to cycle because I moved to Spain and because I had this sport that I was able to do, I was able to reach out to other cycling clubs and meet new people. So it's a, it's a skill that um, sets you up for adulthood, you know, for the rest of your life. If you can get that as a kid and you can have that confidence, um, it's, it's super useful in so many scenarios. Uh, Zoe, what about you? Any comments that you'd like to highlight? Um, I think you already went over the one that um, I feel quite passionate about again, which is that, you know, we have, you know, lockdown, this, this, this period of time is a golden opportunity. 
um, to really take advantage of um, fewer people driving. And it's been so amazing to see so many people cycling. I've seen families, I've seen women out cycling who I'd never saw cycling before. You know, people I saw at the school run who were always driving and um, yeah, it's just, just capitalizing and um, keeping it up because um, we will have that, you know, mental and physical health, all of those benefits um, with the, the magic pill of cycling. I mean, it definitely, that's what I miss, what not the most about, um, lockdown and not being in my physical workplace but I definitely miss that commute and having that time to decompress from work life and from family life and and all of us I think could benefit just um having a bit more time out on two wheels Thank you. And I think all these comments are inspiring lots of people. Um, Narendra, I really enjoyed the chat. Thank you. And so is Margaret Anne. So thanks for your comments there. We love hearing from you as well. Um, Gabby, anything that's caught your eye? Yeah, I was quite drawn to um, Kerry's comment where she says, my kids who are all boys came to watch me ride my first 10 mile time trial to show them that we can ride together no matter what gender or age is really important. Um, and I think that I can just really relate to that. Um, we always bring the kids to watch us if we're racing, often to cyclocross, because we feel that that's like a super nice, family-friendly um, environment. I think it's so nice for them to see us doing the sports, but also seeing like the kids' races, um, even though they're not like quite old enough yet, they love like, you know, being on the side with like the cowbells. It's a nice like day outside. And I think as well, um, with kids all being so different and we can definitely see well in our daughter like that she I think will be very competitive so for her the thought of like racing a bike she finds like it blows her mind she finds it like so exciting <laughs> wonder where she got that from <laughs> um, amazing and Kaz what about you uh, we lost we've got your mute you <laughs> I press the unmute. There Sorry. we go. Uh, what I'm going to do is technical meltdown today. Um, I can't see all the comments because I'm on my phone, but I just wanted to follow on from what Zoe said that, you know, it, it's so exciting this point right now. There's such an opportunity. And yes, there are more cars on the road than there was during lockdown, but street, a lot of streets are being pedestrianised, cycle lanes are popping up. There is a momentum, and I think it's so key for us to all try and build on that momentum, especially when it comes to cycling with children. We know that there's massive gaps. Children don't learn to cycle. Children don't have the safe passage to work on the bike. But all we can do is is help each other and try and, you know, and try and progress. And I think one thing that really helps is setting an example. So if you do cycle with your kids, you know, be there you can be there to give advice to other people who are thinking about it a lot of people are thinking about it and they're kind of hovering on the edge and sometimes they just need a bit of advice and well this is the way I do it so I think it's just a general comment that let's all try and help each other and encourage each other in what is really quite an important time that, that, that won't be here forever mm, a pivotal time thank you and um actually before I wrap it up there's, there's a question here that's just come in that I'd love to get answered so I think we've got the right people here to at least share some opinions. It's from Robin, and he says that urban kids don't necessarily have access to bikes or a place to store them. And the minimum age for bike share programs is 18 here in Dublin. Any ideas to make bikes more accessible to these kids, especially to teenagers? So I just feel like we've got some creative thinkers and some um, campaigners in this panel. So I'm sure we've got some ideas there of the types of things that could be possible. Zoe, I thought you might want to answer this one. I don't know if I have the answer, but um, I did find with, with Kinical Mass as well, there were families that joined that didn't have any bike storage. So um, they all knew how to cycle, but they, they needed to borrow bicycles to get out. And I think it's so difficult. And I think for a lot of people as well, um, who up until now anyway, have worked in places um, in the city where there isn't bike storage. And you, in Bristol, bicycles get nipped all the time. And so finding safe uh, storage for bicycles is a massive massive challenge um, and then also those ones that kids can borrow or under 18s I think that that should be something that the government should be supporting I mean it is again um, something that's going to help the general physical health and mental health of young people and I think uh, especially with lockdown that's an area that uh, that we could really use support in. Cool. Brilliant. Well, thanks for answering that. I'm glad that we managed to get it covered. Um, right. So that's it. Thank you for all your brilliant 
um, stories. It's been inspirational, motivational, and actually quite useful. Lots of practical tips in there as well. So really appreciate you taking the time to share with us today. Also, I'd love it if you wanted to share some pictures of your kids on the bikes. I'd, I'd really like to do this in our Facebook chat. So maybe after this, you can pop me an email if you're happy for us to share any of those pictures. It'd be a really sweet thing to do, I think. Um, so on that note, this has been part of the Women's Festival of Cycling, brought to you by Cycling UK. We are a charity. So if you'd like to join us or donate, please go and check out our website. And on that note, we're gonna say goodbye for now. Thanks everybody.